The first fighting game ever released in 1987 was Street Fighter. Uh, I mean, the series that set up the fighting genre. Okay, the one that revolutionized the fighting genre and solidified itself as a main staple in the genre itself. The series that was so successful that the sequels even had sequels that had spiritual successors to those sequels. What the f- Street Fighter 2 became one, if not the most influential fighting game of all time. With the introduction of combos, the unique character designs, the gram fix and that iconic soundtrack that's been sampled many times. Fight. I mean, I even spent my minimum wage to buy a really expensive arcade cabinet. I may be in some serious debt, but like, look how cool this looks. Uh-oh, the loan sharks weren't supposed to be here till next week. Okay, so Street Fighter 2... Huh? You want me to talk about the other games? You mean Street Fighter 5? Cause... I was gonna get to it if you just didn't interrupt. Oh, you mean three and four? There was a three and a four? And what do you mean I skipped the first game? Okay, since we got through talking about the good of the series, we now gotta talk about how trash the series has become. What is Street Fighter V? They released it as a beta of a pre alpha of an unfinished game with nothing in it. I mean, there was no story, no arcade, and it was a PlayStation exclusive? They really wanted this game to fail, huh? They even censored the game? Cause, I don't know, I guess there was just too much content in the game for them to even handle, and they needed less content. For a game with nothing in it, maybe the online was good. No, it was trash. Great. Now there's nothing to even talk about at this point, it's just a bunch of empty promises built up from its legacy that I left behind at this point. I mean, at least the competitive is, uh, wait, forgot, nobody cares. So, you know what, at this point, don't take it from me, take it from the guy who's actually played every single game in the series. Except for the first one, because that was actual trash. So unlike Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter is actually a series that I enjoy, but kind of like Pokemon in a way, the series has kind of declined over the years. Not in a major way, but the launch of Street Fighter V is probably the worst experience I've ever had with a console fighting game. I feel like this game had some good ideas, like the V trigger mechanic could have been interesting, but at the start of the game's life, it didn't really seem to do any anything interesting in terms of gameplay, and it just kind of left a lot to be desired, especially considering that this game didn't have much content to begin with at the beginning of this game's life cycle. One of the things this game was lacking was a lot of single player content was missing. The big example would be arcade mode, which wasn't present in the original Street Fighter V. And because of this, it's just kind of like, you don't really have a mode where you can just play the game. And instead, you had these character stories that were way too short and way too easy. They mostly just consisted of like two to three battles and just a few cutscenes. And most of the cutscenes didn't really give you much insight on the character's backstory or anything. So for the newer characters, you were just lost and didn't know what they were about. At the time, the only other content was training mode, but training mode didn't have any character trials so you could actually practice combos or anything. So you had to figure it out on your own. And there was survival mode, but I'll explain why <laughs> I'll explain why that mode kinda sucked later. But yeah, overall, that was really the only other content you had. And while the true story mode was marketed in their trailers, it wasn't in the game until maybe like two or one or two months later in the game's launch. So the game really had not much content at all, except maybe online, and that was it. But I'll get into the true story mode later. So another problem I have with this game is unlocking things. And so I brought up survival mode earlier, but the only way to unlock character colors is by playing through survival mode. And it got 
survival mode got way too hard. And if you wanted to unlock the good colors for your character, you'd have to play through like very hard on survival. And, and that takes too long. And it's way too difficult for like casual people, even, even people who play this game nonstop and are very good at it, struggle with survival. So they're just stuck too. The other problem I have with this game's progression and unlocking things is the fight money and how if you want to get a new character skin or just a new character, then you'd have to use fight money. But character skins and characters were way too expensive for how much little fight money you got. So it's kind of like you just have to grind this game out and play this game nonstop in order to get what you wanted. So once again, <laughs> you're stuck. But now I want to talk about the thing that disappointed me most with this game, and that is the story mode. The story mode in this game is probably the worst I've ever played in any video game. I'm not even joking. <laughs> so the first thing I noticed when I finished the story mode was that there really wasn't that many locations in the game, and most of the locations were based off of actual stages, which isn't a problem, but it just feels like, I don't know, feels like it was like cheaply made, like it was made on a small budget. Another thing that I noticed was that most of the characters in this game felt miscast, like they were put in the wrong roles. For example, Macaulay, one of the newest characters to be introduced, he's introduced like this new villain. You watch the first intro trailer for Street Fighter V and you see that like the scars on his face are like kind of shaped like the V in Street Fighter V. So you're thinking, hey, this might got be the main the villain, right? He's gonna be the new villain, Ryu is gonna have to face off with him at the end. But no. Nikali shows up like maybe three times, gets beat by M. Bison, the old villain, and then he gets beat by Ryu at the end and then just disappears with no explanation. <laughs> like what? Why? What purpose did he have in this story? Fake tension? Another example is Rashid's role in this whole story and how he was the one that ended up saving the world even though he's one of the weakest fighters in the story. And I like Rashid, he's probably my new favorite character in the game, but I don't know, I felt like that role wasn't good for him. It felt like that role should have maybe gone to like Guile or Nash or somebody. And then there are still some unanswered questions in the story mode and just some aspects that they didn't even care about. Like for example, Alex just, was just in the story mode for no reason, and so was Sean, even though they had no, very little contribution or just no contribution at all. And Rashid's friend that was in the first cutscene and dies <laughs> in the first cutscene, they didn't even show her face or give her her name, so it's kind of like, why should we care about this character if they're not even gonna bother explaining who she is. They didn't even give her a name. <laughs> so what, what are they doing? So overall, I'd say this is just a really bad story mode. There was hardly any character, any character interaction. The story itself wasn't even that great. Very few set pieces or locations visited. The They did a terrible job explaining that new characters were just using them at all. And the fact that they marketed this game before the game came out and it wasn't even with the full game when it first launched, it... I mean, it really just speaks for itself, really. <laughs> so, to wrap things up, I don't think Street Fighter V is a bad game. I think it plays nice and I think the characters are fun to play and of course they're memorable. I mean, Street Fighter has iconic characters in it. But I just, I feel like I just still feel very bitter <laughs> about wasting $60 on this game that had nothing in it. I'm sure it's better now, now that Arcade Edition and Championship Edition are out now and have more content, but I'll never forget. So overall, it's just, I, I think this game is a perfect example of 
a game that focuses too much on its competitive audience. There's hardly anything for casual players, nothing for them to like learn the game easily, and overall I just, at launch, Street Fighter V was pretty terrible, and <laughs> I hate to say it, but I feel like even some of the worst fighting games that came out that same year, like Pokémon Tournament, was a better game at launch than Street Fighter V. I hate to say it, but that's just how I feel. I think you should buy Street Fighter V Champion Edition now, since now the game has content. <sighs> but if you don't want to check out that game in the series, then I do recommend Street Fighter III Third Strike Online Edition, because that game's roster has a bunch of weird characters in it that I think you'll all grow to like. But I also recommend it because of its hip hop influenced soundtrack as well. And I just think the game is interesting because of that. OMG, Welcome the new Pokemon game series. is about to come out and it's coming on the brand new game console. And not only did it get 1,000 people to make it, but they are making the new animations for the updated graphics. Wow. This game is sure going to turn out to be one, if not the greatest Pokemon video game of all time. Yes, it fails. <laughs> <laughs>